All right, young men. So now that we know about the, what a tectonic plate is and the major plates, now we can talk about the plate boundaries. So the three different ways that these plates can move. They can either come together, they can separate, or they can slide past each other. So let's go and start with the first one. Here we have what we call a convergent boundary. So if you look closely at this picture right here, of this convergent boundary, you see that the two arrows here are doing what? Great job. They're going towards each other, right? They're coming together. In this, uh, they're, they're both pointing to that same spot right there. So the strategy that I like to use for convergent boundaries is something called convergent collide. Now I took, I took this actually from a song, so I want to give credit to Mr. Comerford. Um, he has an awesome song about plate boundaries online on YouTube, and that's where I took that from. So that's a strategy we use, convergent collide. So if you notice with convergent collide, they both start with CO, all right? So that is your convergent boundary. Now, what does it mean to collide? Exactly, it's kind of like a, we don't want to necessarily say crash, right? But that's where they come together, and that's where those arrows come into play, where we see that they both come towards each other. So that's the first kind of boundary. It's a convergent boundary. So let's see what a convergent boundary makes. So here we have convergent crustal features. Now, before we move on to look at exactly what it makes, let's figure out what is a crustal feature. Great job. A crustal feature is pretty much another way of saying it's a landform. So what kind of landform does it make? So we have many kinds of landforms out there. So here it makes three different things. So let's look right here at this very first picture right there. When we look at that picture, we have a part of the ocean right here coming together, right, converging with part of the continent. Okay, so oceanic crust and continental crust come together. And if you notice carefully right here, the ocean plate goes down and it goes under the continental crust. So when it goes under, that is something we call subduction. So the ocean plate, the ocean crust, subducts under the continental crust, the continental plate. So when this happens, we have two things that can happen. The first thing we can have happen is we have a trench. And our trench is right there, all right? Kind of like a dip there. The other thing that can happen here is we have a volcano or volcanoes being formed, and that's what we see right there. So those are two things that can definitely happen when two plates converge or come together. Now the second thing that happens, all right, and we have here, we have continental crust with continental crust. So for example, two different plates that are, that are um, fall underneath a continent, all right, when those two plates come together, all right, collide when they converge, they make mountains. And that's what we have right there. So just as a quick review, when you have ocean and continental plates coming together, you form either a trench or a volcano or both. And when two pieces of continent come together, when they converge, you form mountains. So let's look at the second type of plate boundary. All right, so here we have a divergent boundary. So what do you notice about the arrows here? Great job. They're going away from each other. All right, they're going in two different directions. They're splitting apart. So for this one right here, the strategy, and again, from that song from Mr. Comerford, I'm taking divergent divide. So if you notice with this one, they both start with DIV, right? So divergent divide, they divide, they split apart, they separate. That's a divergent boundary. So let's see what a divergent boundary can create. All right, so divergent crustal features. What do we say crystal features meant again? Great job. It's just another way of saying landforms. What's going to be formed here? All right. So when we look at divergent boundaries, we have two types. All right. We have one where we have ocean plates. So as you can see here in this picture, we have part of the ocean there and then part of the ocean here. So when they separate, we create something known as a mid-ocean ridge. Now the mid-ocean ridge, um, sometimes what happens there, as you can see in this section right here, 
we have the magma, all right, starts to come up. And when you have magma coming up, what do you have forming? Great job of volcano. So sometimes this mid-ocean ridge, we can call it an underwater volcano. Now, the mid-ocean ridge also has a very important name. What happens here is when the magma comes up and eventually it cools and hardens, we have new ocean floor there. So when we have new ocean floor there in that area, this is known as sea floor spreading. So that comes from the term, obviously if it's, if it's a divergent boundary, it divides, it's spreading apart and it's the floor of the sea, so it's called sea floor spreading. And then the magma hardens right here and creates new ocean floor along that section. So let's go over here to the second type over here. In this one, we have continental crust here, and we also have continental crust right there. So when the continent separates, we have something we call a rift valley. All right, so just to review here, two ocean plates spreading apart, that seafloor spreading, that's an underwater volcano, it's called a mid-ocean ridge. One of the most important ones that we have out there is the mid-Atlantic Ridge. All right, so this one happens in the Atlantic Ocean. And then when we have two continents separating, or two pieces of continent separating, we have our Rift Valley. Let's look at the third and final type of plate boundary. All right, so here we have what we have, what we call a transform boundary. So again, let's look here at these arrows. And what do you notice about these arrows? They're doing what? Great job. They're kind of sliding past each other. So for this one, the, the strategy I like to use for this one is transform slide slash shake. So we have the S and transform, S and slide, S and, sa and shake. So when they're sliding past each other, you can have it like this. They can look like that. They can be at an angle. It can be however, as long as they're sliding one past the other. So let's see what kind of crustal features or landforms, right, um, a transform boundary creates. So here we have transform crustal features. So let's just really fast review that. Crustal features, what are we talking about when we say the word crystal feature? Great job, it's a landform. So here what we have is something we call a fault. All right, so when the plates are sliding past each other and there's a lot of a lot of pressure, what ends up happening to the plates is that they break. So when the plates break, we call that a fault. So here we have three examples of faults, a reverse fault, a normal fault, and a strike slip fault. All right. So when the, when the plates break, when the crust breaks, we have a fault. Now when the pressure is really intense and really, really high, all right, and you know, the plates are still sliding because it's still a transform boundary, we now have our earthquake. So we still have the fault there, but from the center, there's so much pressure right there that we have these seismic waves being spread out, and that's when we feel the shaking and the rumbling of the crust. So just as a review here, when the plates slide past each other with a lot of pressure, the, the plates break, and with enough pressure, with intense pressure, there's a lot of shaking on the earth, on the earth's crust, and that's when we have our earthquake. So what are the impacts? Think about it, and we're not gonna answer this here, I just want you to think about it, because we're gonna talk about it in class, but think about it. How do these different plate boundaries, the fact that they're constantly moving, whether it's a convergent boundary, divergent boundary, or transform boundary, how does that impact the land? How does it impact organisms? And what's an organism? Great job, an organism is a living thing, so we have plants, we have animals, right? Bacteria, I mean, those are living things, those are organisms. So how does, how does the movement of these plates impact the land and the organisms? So I want you to think to yourself, you know, while you're at home, think to yourself, what are the pros? What is a pro? Good, what are the positive things? How does it impact us, affect us positively? And I also want you to think of the cons. So that's the opposite of, of the positive pros. These are the negative things. What kind of negative impacts, negative effects does it have on us? All right, so thanks for watching, young man. See you later.